Let's solve problem one. We're going to go ahead and create another method. And this is not going to return anything. So we can say print all whole numbers below. And we can pass it in a variable argument. We'll say number. And this will be of type int. And inside of it, let's first check to make sure that the number is in fact greater than zero before we do any logic. And if it is greater than zero, we can go ahead and add our curly braces. And this is where we'll do a set of logic. So we'll add a for loop here and we'll say for int i is equal to number. And we can say i is greater than zero. And we can subtract one from i each time we go through our for loop. And let's go ahead and add this log i. So I can go ahead and test to make sure that this method works by going into view did load and I can say self print all whole numbers below and let's use five to start with. So what we're doing here is we're passing in the number five and we test that number five to make sure it's greater than zero. We don't want to use a negative number and assuming it is greater than zero we go into our for loop and we say our initial value of i is equal to our number and we say i must be greater than zero and then we subtract one from i every time we go through our for loop. And we'll be able to print out all of the numbers as it iterates down from five all the way to zero. So let's go ahead and run our application. We'll see it come up here and in my console, we'll be able to print out this information. And we'll be able to see five, four, three, two, one print out. So we see here five all the way down to one. Let's go ahead and solve problem number two. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new method. And this method, we're going to first return nothing. And we're going to go give it a method name. So we're going to get, say print whole numbers in between first integer. And we'll say give it the argument name first integer. And second integer. And we'll give it a variable name or argument name here, second integer. We can add our curly braces. And what we're doing in this method is we're passing in two arguments instead of one like we did in the last uh, method. So hopefully you'll get a little more comfortable passing in multiple arguments into uh, your method. So first here we want to say if first integer is equal to second integer, What should we do? Well, let's end this log. The numbers are equal. Uh, and then we can add an else if below it, which means we can do another comparison or test. And we can say if first integer is greater than second integer, and we can say for int i is equal to first integer i is greater than or equal to second integer i minus minus which subtracts one from i each time we go through our for loop and now we can add some sort of logic in here we can say ns log uh, percent i which is our, our token and we have to pass it in integer arguments so we're going to pass an i and oh i made a mistake here make sure instead of using semicolons in your for loop and i used a comma there accidentally um, and finally we can add an else below it and we can say else and we can say for int i equals second integer i is greater than or equal to first integer and we can say i minus minus and we can ns log this as well. So we'll say ns log percent i comma i. And so what's going on with this method? Well, we're passing in two integers and we're testing them. So we say if both integers are equal to one another, just print out the numbers are equal. If the first integer is greater than the second integer, set i equal to our first integer and i must be greater than or equal to our second integer because we know that our second integer is less than our first integer and each time we iterate through our for loop subtract one from i finally our else statement knows that the second integer must be greater than our first integer 
So in this case, we say i is equal to second integer, and i must be greater than or equal to first integer. And again, we subtract 1 each time we go through our for loop. So let's go ahead and try this method out. And I can go ahead, I'm going to remove my previous method call here. And we're going to say self print whole numbers between first integer. So let's do 10 and 5 first. And we go ahead and run this application. And let's see what prints out to our console. So I'm going to go ahead and enlarge my console a little bit so we can see everything. And we see 10 prints all the way down to 5. And I flip, if I flip these two, so let's do 5 and then 10 first. Let's see how this works as well. Well, again, it prints out the correct numbers. So great, our method is working properly, and we now were able to get two parameters to work properly as well. Finally, let's solve our third challenge, or third problem here. And in this problem, we want to be careful when we pass in our parameters later on, because um, our computer program will run out of space pretty quickly, because factorials are pretty powerful. Um, and in this method, we're going to return an integer value. So we're going to practice return types here. We're going to do int, and we're going to give it a method name so we can say factorial of integer. And we can say number. And this will be our variable uh, argument or parameter. So we'll have access to number inside of our method. We can say int answer is equal to number. And we can make a for loop. So we can say for int i equals to number. i is greater than 1. And we'll subtract 1 from i each time we go through our for loop. And we're going to say answer is equal to answer times i minus 1, which is how we create our factorial. And then finally, we know that we have to return an integer here because we gave it a return type. So let's return our answer. Now let's go ahead and get the factorial of an integer. So let's scroll up to view did load. And we know that we're going to get an integer back from this method. So let's first create an integer. We can say int answer for factorial. And we can say self factorial of integer. And let's use 3 first. And let's print out our answer. So we can do percent %i, which is our token. And we can pass in the argument answer factorial. And now let's go ahead and run our application. And we see 6 comes out. So what's going on with this method? Well, we're passing in a number. And we're setting our number equal to our answer. And then we're iterating through and updating the value of our answer. And finally, we return our answer. Now the most important thing here we want to do is we want to return an integer because we have a return type. So our last two methods, we did not have a return type, so we didn't have to return anything. But we did have multiple arguments. So this method has one argument, and we pass a number, and it also has a return type. So becoming comfortable with return types and arguments is incredibly important as you're starting to learn about methods.